Eric with American Business Systems. I want to welcome you this afternoon to our weekly webinar. Uh, we're going to talk today about how much money medical billing business owners can actually earn. Now we're going to talk about a lot of information here today, some, some things that we'll discuss about uh, what's in the news, but really we want to focus in on you today on really what kind of money that can actually be made, how that's going to work for you, and so you'll, be, you'll even get a chance to even ask some questions as we go along this afternoon. So get ready for that. We'll show you how to do that in just a moment. All right, again, let me just introduce myself to you. My name is Eric Oje. I'm the uh, Director of Research and Development here at American Business Systems. Let me see if I can get this, uh, this. There we go. Got the, uh, the slides working there for us on our end. But uh, again, just to introduce myself again, Eric Oje with American Business Systems and the Director of uh, Research and Development. We'll talk a lot more about that again as we go through the presentation today. We also want to make sure that you can hear us this afternoon. And you'll notice up in the right-hand corner of your screen there, there is a little icon of a hand. So we ask that you would click on that hand. That will indicate back to us. That's the only way we can get feedback from you, uh, the audience, to let us know that you're hearing us all right. So I see that Henry, you can hear me. Uh, Tanya, okay, very good. Yolanda, actually there's two Yolandas. Good to have both of you here. Uh, Vicente, Toya, uh, Todd, Sandy, good to have you. Ron, good to have you here. Julie, good to have you. Devon, David, Brian, great crowd here. We've really got a, a, a huge crowd this afternoon. All right, let me, for those for if this is your first time to ever join one of our webinars, let me explain who American Business Systems is for you. Uh, we have been around for just as you can see up in the left hand corner of your screen there for 20 years now. And we've been helping folks just like yourself be able to work from home, whether they want to work from home or they want to work uh, from an office. That's really up to you. But we've been putting people into business in very specifically medical billing, and what we'd actually say today, revenue cycle management, uh, again, for the last 20 years. And so you too can be like one of these folks that, that you see here on the screen, working and doing billing. Uh, and the reason why they're capable of doing that is because of our platform that we have. It's a web-based platform. It's not a server-based so that you have to load software on your side and then load software on the doctor's side. And then so through some some kind of interconnectivity work all this through. It's all through the internet. Now we'll explain a little bit more about that, how that works, but you can see that you can see it on a desktop, an iPad, an iPhone. So it gives you the capability of, of uh, being able to be as large as you actually want to be. Also, let me draw your attention to our website. It is absystems.com. There you'll find all about our business and about who we are and these different services that you see here, EMRX, Audit Guard, CodeWrite. Uh, there's a lot of information here on our website. Kind of get to know us, who we are, you know, who the team is. News, where you see that little uh, news icon, that's where you can find our blog and a lot of more information. But if you really want to do your due diligence, we want to really show you that big orange button there or the one down here at the bottom. This will actually get you into what's called our virtual brochure. Now, folks, this is where you can really get involved in knowing more. We've got videos in here. We've got testimonials in here. Uh, there's a lot of printed material. A lot of people ask us, hey, can you just send us something? Send something in print to our home. Um, we found that living in the age that we're living in now and with the web technology that there is, that's been the best way to communicate, really, without you being stuck with a whole bunch of paper and you have to go store it somewhere else. You can keep coming back to here. But, folks, you can see that there are several sections. And within those sections, they're divided into subsections. So we want you to get in to know who we are. If you want to know about the opportunity, get into there. The getting clients, you can see that there's 10 sections in there. And keep going forward all the way through the final step to learn more about this business and what you can learn about this business. A lot of people ask us about uh, here about at American Business Systems. Are you associated with any particular organization? Well, we're not particularly associated with the Better Business Bureau, but we do have a A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, which you couldn't even ask for anything better than that. So, folks, you want to go check us out? That's the place to go check us out. Make sure that you go out there and see our A plus rating. 
even further due diligence, if you want to, you can certainly be able to join and, and visit us here at uh, in, in here in Fort Worth. We're in a community just north of Fort Worth in a community called Keller, Texas. You can see our address right there, 5751 Kroger Drive, here in Dallas, Texas area. Uh, if you wanted to ever fly in, just come on into the DFW area, airport, fly in. We'll make some arrangements to come pick you up from the airport, get you out here and visit with us uh, at our corporate office there. Folks, we've got our next training class that's coming up March the 3rd through the 7th. Uh, and that is about three and a half weeks away, I believe, is what it kind of turns out to be. And with February being such a short month, it, this, this will fly by and we're already going to be into the March uh, training class, which will be the first quarter of this year. So if you're looking to get into this business, you're, now is the time. Matter of fact, I'll share with you some information that I shared with a doctor today. And I want to tell you and give you his feedback on the help that doctors actually need. And uh, Patrick, remind me about that whenever we, we jump on here in just a little bit. But again, uh, let me introduce you to Patrick Phillips. He is our CEO and founder of American Business Systems. Patrick, Patrick is, a, a, is a, uh, a great author. He's written a book here on the left-hand side, How to Reprogram Yourself for Success, and then the one on the right, Cash Crunch to Cash Flow. Now, this book is for doctors that want to know how they can get more cash flow into their business, but it's actually for you as part of being part of American Business Systems. Uh, you can find both of these books out on Amazon.com, so you can certainly go out there and get a copy of that there. Now, Mr. Phillips is also on the editorial board of Billing and Coding Advantage. It's one of the biggest magazines that there is in the medical billing world. He has written uh, this article, How Doctors Can Cut Their Billing Costs by Up to 50%, uh, and that was just dated the December and January edition. So that was December of last year and January of this year. He's got a new article coming out very soon, so we'll, we might be able to have a copy of that. But if you're interested in seeing a copy of this, check with your ABS rep that you're working with. We can certainly email you a copy of that. So listen, without any further ado, we want to really get things kicked off here. So Patrick, good to have you here this afternoon. Thanks, Eric. Uh, hey, can you tell I'm in a different location today? Yeah, <laughs> you kind of surprised me there uh, whenever I first got online with you today. I normally do this uh, from my home, but uh, I'm actually up at the office today. I, I, it's only about 15 minutes away from my home, but uh, it's kind of more comfortable at home. You know, you can just dress the way you want to, and you've got snacks. The refrigerator is only 10 feet away, you know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, hey, this is going to be a good one today, folks. If you're tuning in to find out uh, if this is the right business for you to get involved in, then this pretty much uh, zeroes in on it, doesn't it, Eric? I mean, it's all about the money. Right. It, it is all about the money, and I tell you, uh, if you don't mind me sharing just a little bit of what that doctor said today, you know, no, we, we no, go ahead. That. Yeah, that was an interesting story. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, we all know that things are changing this year. I mean, 2014 is a critical, pivotal year. Not only do doctors have to be in an EMR service, but you know, those codes are going to be changing here in October. This is what he told me today. He says, uh, a lot of doctors are going to find themselves on vacation come October, aren't they? I said, yeah, yes, if they're vacation. not prepared, that's correct. Because <laughs> they've got to switch to the new uh, ICD-10 diagnosis codes uh, in October. And if they don't, if they're not ready for it, then uh, they, they can't submit claims, can they? That's right. And the reason he said that, Patrick, is because I was actually demoing our EMRX system today to him and showing him that we already have the ICD-10 codes built in, that was so impressive to him. So that's that's one of those key elements, folks, that we wanted to kind of show you. It's kind of off, off topic here, a little bit of what we're talking about here, but that's how you're going to be able to make money. Yeah, because uh, one of the things that we do as a company, of course, is uh, Eric is a part of our research and development department. He actually helps with some demos and coordinates those demos. Uh, with other staff members for our licensees. In other words, as you become a licensee, you can set up a demonstration of our system with a doctor. We then get on and actually do the demonstration and answer all the questions. You're just sitting on there watching it like you are here. It's all exactly. done through uh, this type of technology. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great story, Eric. I'm glad you uh, brought that up today. Um, by the way, if people want to ask questions, you want to tell them about uh, how to type sure. it in? 
Well, not only did you see that little icon of a hand up there, but there is in your uh, your little control panel there an area where you can type some questions in. Now, uh, Brian, uh, you've already actually typed in a statement. Can you uh, can you turn your voices up? Hopefully, you can hear us a little bit louder, so you can indicate back to us and let us know that. But this is an area where you you're the audience today, and just just pretend that we can hear you loud and clear, like we're on a phone. So if you have any questions that you want to ask Patrick or myself, uh, just give us, ask the question. We'll stop right in the middle of the presentation and answer your question. So, all right, Patrick, let's go ahead and get started here. Yeah, uh, okay, so I'm going to start with a quote from a magazine. This is the Healthcare uh, Billing and Management Association. Now, we're members of this association. Uh, we pass on information from this organization to our organization, but one of the interesting things they said here recently was this uh, statement here. We estimate that the expected growth in the medical billing industry at just under 6% per year. Now, Eric, what other industry has a 6% growth per year that you know yeah. of? I mean, maybe uh, food? Huh. I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe food. Uh, but I tell you, whenever the, we have this type of growth in this type of a sector, and especially with everything else going along, I, I would venture to say that it's probably going to grow from 6%. I would, I would think so. And it's clearly one of the best sectors in a weak economic environment, which everybody admits we are still kind of in a weak environment, right? It's not really stabilized yet for sure. Uh, this is a chart right out of that article, by the way, uh, on healthcare spending in the United States. Look, it's from 1960 to two, 2020. And look at those bars. Look, Eric, I don't know about you, but if I'm going to get into a business, don't you want the bars to be growing like that upward? There's an upward trend here. Uh, mm -hmm. By the year 2020, projected is four trillion four hundred eighty-seven thousand, uh, or is that billion? Billions in there. B billion, uh, yeah. So we're we're actually talking trillion there. Uh, yeah. So that's why I said, per your last slide, you know, where, you know, there's going to be a six percent increase in in the sector, you know, every year. I, yeah. I think it's actually going to be greater than that as we as time goes by. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I lost control there for a second. Let me get back here. Okay, uh, this also came out of that. So if you're wondering how big a slice of the pie is for medical billers, look at this. On the left, you see that black circle there. Uh, that's the broad revenue cycle management and technology opportunity in medical the medical field, $73 billion. Uh, the physician medical billing is only $9 billion. But you split that in half because we focus on the office-based physician medical billing, so it's still 4.5. Eric, I still say that's a $4.5 trillion industry. That's that's a pretty good one to be in. Uh, that's a huge industry to be in. Uh, and, yeah. and uh, you know, I, I don't know what other business opportunities there are out there, Patrick, but I don't know if they're any bigger than, than this. All you want is a little tiny slice of that pie <laughs> and a little exactly. tiny slice of that stack of $100 bills right there. Uh, it's growing because of a couple of things. One is the baby boomers. I mean, 10,000 baby boomers retire every day in the United States and will for the next 20 years. So folks, that's new people, of course, getting into the system, uh, the healthcare system that will be going to the doctor more often. They have more time to do that, right? They're retired. And they yeah. have more health problems, of course, too. Sure. And and not alone with just that, then you've got the Affordable Care Act that you've got coming up here. Uh, you know, whenever this thing kind of finally gets on track to some degree, uh, there is another potential of a 30 million uninsured people that are going to be hitting the doctor's office as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've heard different numbers. Uh, 30 million is just a round figure, I think. Yeah. But uh, the point is, there will be a whole lot more people going to the doctor, generating that many more claims. That's good news for our licensees. People who are in medical billing are rejoicing at the Affordable Care Act for that reason, at least, because it will bring more uh, vis visits to the doctor's office, which means more more claims to process. Correct. So, Eric, let, let's talk about this question. Why would a doctor outsource their billing? I mean, you get that question all the time, don't you? Can't they just do it in-house cheaper themselves? Yes. Yeah. You know, that's that's the, uh, I would say, the misconception of, of thinking about it, can a doctor do it cheaper in their office. Matter of fact, I want to actually, uh, you know, segue into a question back to your, if you could go back to that, that slide there real quickly. Uh, Vicente is asking, does ABS sell the software directly to the doctors? Well, I want to answer two questions based upon that, and that, that question that just came in. 
No, we don't. We don't sell it directly to the doctors. We don't give it directly to the doctors because we also know that it kind of goes along with this question. Why would it, if they could do it cheaper in-house? Even if the doctors, Patrick, and we both know this because, I mean, we've done enough of our own research. Even if we gave them, <laughs> even if we just gave the software to the doctors, it doesn't mean that they're going to do it cheaper. No. Uh, so to Vicente, to answer your question, no, we don't. We don't actually sell this directly to the doctors. This software only gets to the doctors via our licensees. But even if we could, it doesn't even mean that they would be able to do it cheaper. Right. Now, Eric, I, I think maybe the source of that question comes from there is a company out there that does something similar to what we do uh, that does do that. They sell their same software that they provide to their licensees uh, directly to the doctors. Correct. Uh, under, under a different uh, brand name. Yeah. Right. Well, here's one of the reasons why they can't do it cheaper. One of the reasons is because there's such a huge rejection rate. In other words, when the claims are submitted uh, to the payers, the insurance companies, 34% of those claims get rejected upon initial submission. Uh, Eric, why, why is that? Well, uh, the, the largest reason, Patrick, that we've, we've seen is because of um, incorrect patient demographic information. And whenever right. I say demographic, I, we're just talking about your phone number, your address. Um, human error, yeah. Exactly. And, and here's, a, here's something I want to bring up there. A lot of people ask us about our, our software, iClaim, and if a doctor is using their own software, their billing software, can't they just bring in their old patient demographics into our system? Well, we can, but I want you to address the garbage in, garbage out factor there because... Yeah, that, that's been known for years that if you have a system, any kind of a computer system that you bring in garbage, meaning bad data, uh, that can corrupt the entire thing and it, and it won't work. So in our case, we can bring in the data from a, a computer system that a doctor is currently using, but why do that when right. that is the reason why they're having such a huge rejection rate is all the data is not accurate and up to date. So we tell uh, doctors and licensees to begin from scratch with the next patient that walks in the door, that's when you start entering that data into right. the system. Now there is a way for the doctor to enter the data using the electronic medical record system mm -hmm. on their end uh, using an iPad or a computer at their office and it's automatically in the system so that when you go to bill it's all there and it's all accurate. If it's you not, know, it's the I, doctor's fault. <laughs> yeah, and actually, and I actually did that today for that doctor whenever I did that demo, Patrick. Oh, did you? He was blown away that we could literally pull patient demographics from the insurance company. He goes, I can see how that's going to save my office time. And, oh, he, and this is this is what else he said. He says, that means I can see more patients. Hey, there you go. Translates into <laughs> more patients, which is more revenue for the doctor. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, exactly. Eric, just to clarify, Eric's talking about the eligibility from the insurance company. In other words, is this patient who just walked in the door eligible to be paid on this visit? And with the push of a button, Eric, literally, uh, as long as you have their ID number, you put that in the system, push a button, and it, it shows you instantly whether they're eligible or not. And if it is, you push another button, and like Eric said, all that data comes right into our system from the insurance company's database. It's it's the most real-time billing system that's out there, folks, and uh, not many people have it. Okay, so and, let's and that, zoom in on this cost yeah. thing here. Let's talk about that because we've got two columns there, in-house costs and then the outsource costs. Uh, talk to them a little bit about the cost there. Yeah, well, first of all, let me tell you where we got these numbers from. Uh, we have in our, as a licensee, you will have at your disposal what's called a practice analysis. And what, what this is, this is basically what a practice analysis will kind of pull from. We, we can generate what the doctors actually do it and then compare it exactly to what you could do as an outsourced billing company. So these, these numbers that we have up here on the screen about in-house cost, these are legitimate numbers here. So it normally takes, Patrick, we probably know it takes more than one and a half people to actually do the billing, but we yeah. do know that it's at least more than one person. So we kind of split that cost in half. So that's at least $46,000 just right off the top. So if we just took the comparison there, you can see 
that it actually costs the doctor more to do in-house billing versus outsourcing. And we haven't even gotten into the payroll taxes, the, comp, the workers' comp, training costs, uh, hardware and software. That is, that is a legitimate $3,000 a month cost there. So when you're looking at $65,000 per year versus $28,000, to me it looks about like half, almost yeah, at 48%. Right. So folks, when, when uh, somebody asks you that question, well, why would the doctor turn over their billing to you? Bottom line, it's, it's money in their pocket. Why, why would they do it otherwise? Now, why do doctors keep it in-house, Eric? Some of them are just control freaks, right? They, they're never going to let it out no matter what, even if they lost money, I guess. Right. Yeah. But uh, a lot of them have made the decision, of course, to outsource to uh, another billing company. But, Eric, that's where most of our licensees find it easy to sign up a doctor because if they've already mentally said, okay, I know it's better to outsource, it's cheaper, but they're not happy with the results because maybe that billing company doesn't have the real-time billing system and eligibility and all these things we're talking about in our system, then they're ready to switch. They're, they're, they're open, at least, to being presented uh, another option because they always want to make, of course, more money. <laughs> exactly. I do not know how I got back to that slide. Oh, I know. I stuck a few of these in here to remind people that they can type questions in, so <laughs> that's why it showed up. <laughs> yeah, not, not a problem. Okay. Uh, but, but you know, saying that, Sandy's got a question here. Uh, she goes, I do know that many doctor, many ICD codes are rejected because doctors often use the ICD codes for pain as a diagnosis, but it's a symptom, not a diagnosis. Uh, that's that's kind of sort of right, uh, Sandy, there, but, but again, the doctors have to use correct ICD-9 codes. And, and uh, depending upon what kind of specialty they are, th that's where they're going to actually be losing the money there. Yeah, so without getting in too deep into this, let me just say this. Uh, I want everybody to know, Eric, that it has nothing to do with your knowledge of codes right. as to whether you can be successful in this business. Because, folks, we train people uh, right down here in Dallas every six weeks. And what would you say, Eric, 90 five percent of them have never had any background or understanding of this field billing coding that it's completely they come from different fields completely and they still are successful in our business why because our system has all those codes built into it so we're going to teach you that you get the codes initially from the doctor if the codes are not right our system can double check on that and again uh, make sure that they're not rejected because we correct those codes before we submit them so exactly all right, well, here's, here's another quote I thought was interesting, Eric. Uh, New England Journal of Medicine, that's a pretty uh, solid uh, journal that's out there. Everybody's heard of it probably. Market analysts estimate that 24 cents of every dollar are wasted on administrative and billing expenses. Now, that, to me, that's hard to believe. Uh, even, even half of that, let's say 12%, is just the billing side of those expenses. That's, what, twice what a licensee could charge the doctor to do the billing and uh, still make a, a lot of money off of that. So uh, we'll get to that here in a second, but here's another quote I found from uh, Dr. Vern. I'll let you uh, pronounce that last name, Eric. Uh, we can never get that name, that last name correct. <laughs> Karen Wattenko. Uh, anyway, he's a best-selling author and a practicing family physician. He says it costs him $20. When you add in all the overhead costs and what it costs really inside of a doctor's office to get that claim submitted and checked on and the computers and the ongoing support and everything, he says it's about $20 per claim. Now, Eric, our licensees can do it for half that and still make right. a really, really nice income, can't they? They certainly can. And, uh, you know, I want to stop here for a moment here and address a, a, a question that came in from Amon. And uh, he, he goes, and I, and I agree with you to some extent here, but he goes, uh, from my experience, the practices are married to their system especially because of uh, re retraining staff and, and themselves. He goes, how do you sell this program if there is a pushback because of this reason? Well, here, here's the funny thing. The, the best way for me to answer that is to tell you that I could show you a report right now from signups from our licensees that are coming into our offices uh, every day from licensees all across the country that are signing doctors up. Now, how is it? that our licensees are switching those doctors from the system they're currently using. You may think that all the doctors out there are, are tied to it, maybe in your experience, 
but in our experience, all we can tell you is that we do have doctors switching because, well, Eric, here is a perfect example. Uh, in our research and development, we actually talked to a doctor who had already spent, what was it, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 on another electronic medical record system? Correct. They put that down on it, and uh, Eric said, you need to just write that off and, and switch to ours. Well, instead, he just went back to the company and got his money back, but the point is, that they, they, they have spent a lot of money on those systems sometimes. But look, if the system is only bringing in, let's say, 70% of the money that they could be bringing into their practice, how long are you going to let that uh, go on? you you got to at some point say, I'm cutting ties with that system, and I'm moving to one that can save you money. And folks, our records show that you will be able to save doctors up to 50% on their billing costs. For some doctors, that can mean whether they stay in practice or not, couldn't it, Eric? Exactly. So, Amon, how that happens, again, it's kind of like what we showed you a minute ago. We've got that breakdown of what their real costs are versus if they outsource it to you, not just to any medical billing company, but to you as an ABS licensee, because we have a track record of making sure that we're collecting all that we can. So, when you start to see, I mean, it'd be, I mean, we're all good business people here. If we can see in black and white how much money that you're losing versus what you can make. That's where you see a doctor like this go, my overhead costs are out of control. Right. And and they all know that. They just don't know what to do about it. They don't know what the solution to that is. Right. So one of the things that we tell licensees who are just looking into this, people just looking into getting and becoming a licensee is look at this form that's on the screen right here folks this is a one page eight and a half by eleven form as you can see it has some data filled in there if you can learn to fill out this form <laughs> you can file insurance claims for doctors and get them more money faster and free them up for their staff and them to see more patients and provide better care that's how simple this business really is isn't it Eric? It is and again I'm going to kind of refer back I'm kind of watching these questions as they come in Mark is asking the question so how can you take one and a half people on staff to do what's able to do what's one and two hours per day for one person. Well, it's because, Mark, we don't know what doctors, if they're still filing on paper or if they're using an old clunky system. For you as a licensee, yes, it can take you just one or two hours to, to do work for one doctor. But again, these offices, not only are they doing the billing, but they're calling these insurance companies, checking eligibility. We're not only reducing cost and overhead, but we're actually reducing labor of uh, what it takes those yes. people on there, and time is worth money. So right. yeah, it, it, Patrick's about to show you the way our system looks and works, and, and so that's, if you can truly do what he's saying right here, fill out this piece of paper, you can certainly do it on our electronic system as well. Yeah, look, even if you were filling this paper out uh, on just a screen form, you know, just tabbing from one field to the next, filling this in, this is the first time information that you need from a patient, right? All the insurance information and their demographics and so forth, and the information about that particular visit down towards the bottom. But look, how long would that take you to fill that in, folks? Three, four, five minutes maybe? That's for the first visit. Now, once the data is in there, when they come back on the second visit, all you're putting in is a couple of codes and a couple of dates. Our licensees in some of my interviews on our blog will tell you, that it only takes about 30 to 45 seconds to do a claim in our system because of the way it's streamlined and, and set up. And of course, it's a cloud-based billing system, which means, guys, you can actually run this business from any device that's connected to the internet. Now, I would hate to think that I was going to do all my billing on my iPhone. You know, that'd be kind of a tiny screen, but it could be done. It's all there because it's just web-based and you're just accessing it through a browser from any device. There's nothing that resides on your computer. Nothing. Absolutely not. You could go to a library. You could hook up, uh, you know, uh, in an RV with a, a, you know, a satellite on top and do our, do the billing with our system. It's how, that's how freeing it is when you realize it. Here's a screenshot of what it looks like. As you can see, it's very clean, very organized, very laid out so that it's, it's easy to get around in. And folks, I claim is what we've branded this system because you will be the only licensees, billing companies that are out there that are actually offering the doctors uh, the ability to utilize our system. And we'll show you a little bit more about it uh, here just a little bit later as well. Uh, Patrick, let's, uh, let's, uh, great, we got a question that comes up here. 
Can we just take a moment? Now we're, we're down here at the bottom of the hour, uh, and I know we're about to talk about how much money can they make. But, uh, you know, Henry's asking a question, and really this is a question that everybody asks. So maybe you could just go to our screenshots here, our video screens, and let's just talk about this. Uh, how do you actually get in front of a doctor, you know, with, you know, without just stepping over that office manager, breaking into that the office and busting in through that bulletproof glass? You know, Patrick, I'm just asking you as the CEO and founder of American Business Systems for 20 years, how do we get our licensees in front of those doctors? All right, give me one week in our classroom, and I will teach you all 12 of those ways to do that. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not being facetious there. I'm, I'm telling the facts are, folks, that we have figured out over the last 20 years how to do that. R remember, that's what you're paying. One of the things you're paying for with our license fee is our experience and our know-how. You can try to recreate this from scratch yourself and go out and make all the mistakes that me and my wife made uh, back in the early 90s to try to get our business built. But there's no need to do that nowadays. Don't recreate the wheel. We have got the system down. That's why we call it American Business Systems, because it's a step-by-step -step system. And if you do it, those who follow the system sign up doctors. It just happens. Right. They, yeah. they do. So, Henry, hopefully that helped answer your question. But they, we do seriously have ways that you we show you how to get the attention of the doctor. There, there is no doubt. Okay, let's keep going. Um, Actually, you got a couple of ways to get started in medical billing. Let's talk about yeah, those. Yeah, I mean, most people know that there's lots of information out there on the Internet that they could download or enroll in courses or read books or whatever. And, and then you can go out and get a job maybe in a medical office. So that's one way, and uh, it takes a lot of uh, figuring out what's the best way to learn all this. And some people take courses in coding, for example, Eric, and they don't even need it. They don't realize that. But they're sold out there on the Internet as courses that you got to know to be doing the billing. So they do all that. It takes them a year or say to get all through all that and thousands of dollars, and then they go to find a job in a doctor's office. And Eric found this uh, on uh, the government website, the Bureau of Leverage Statistics. Talk to them about this. And well, yeah, folks. You know, we we again do our research here, and uh, so when we went out there to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, we just started looking at billing and posting clerks. Now, this is just the generic billing and posting clerks for for different industries. But as you can see down there at the very bottom, that or really at where Patrick's kind of circling right there, you know, it's $34,000 a year is basically what you're going to make. Now, if you go to that website, you'll see that for Office of Physicians, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about people that actually work in the doctor's office. You know, their median pay is $34,000 a year. Now, you could go to work, get you a certificate. Uh, well, first of all, go to a, uh, a technical school, uh, get a certificate that'll cost you about fifteen to twenty-four, twenty-five thousand dollars just to get that certificate to go work at a doctor's office, and that's what you're going to make. Yeah. Uh, and that's Eric, what, to, to, to people who don't have a job, or maybe they don't make that much money now, that probably sounds pretty good. Exactly. But wait till you see that that's the kind of money that you could make, folks, having one client. One. One client. One client. And that's basically what you're doing right here with this one doctor. That's what you're going to be making with one doctor being an employee. Yeah, so the other way, of course, to get started in this business is to just start your own medical billing business. Now, how do you do that? Lots of confusing information I know, those of you who've been doing your due diligence that you found out there on the internet, right? Lots of companies want to sell you this and that and courses and books and tapes and videos and all kinds of stuff. But folks, we have done all the work over the last 20 years putting together a turnkey system. That means you get the system, turn the key, and it just works. And so it includes all the marketing materials, all the training, all the support that you need to make uh, success in this business. Okay, real quickly, um, I, I see that Patrick had to cough there. <laughs> I'm going to uh, ask a question or answer a question here from Todd. Did I, did uh, I mute that okay? <laughs> yeah, you did fine. You did fine. Uh, Todd asked the question, how does ABS compare to a doctor who is already outsourcing their claims? Todd, we have two reports that can be pulled when you do that practice analysis. Uh, there's a there could be a report that you can use if they're 
doing it in-house or if they're outsourcing. So those are two, two things there. Your second question here, Todd, is how much saturation is there in the market? I'd say 100%, and I'll tell you why it's 100%, because every doctor is doing billing. Right. Every doctor. So it doesn't matter if they're outsourcing or if they're doing it in-house. The market is saturated if you think of it that way. But yeah. does it mean that they're making the money that they need to be making? No, it doesn't. Uh, okay, Eric, I'm moving around, moving a little quicker here now. Let's talk about this. So we're focusing in now on iClaim. Remember, that's our system that we refer to as our billing system. And let's talk about the kind of money that can be made. Now, one of the ways you can do this yourself, prove it to yourself, is to go back to our website at absystems.com. You'll see it at the bottom of our screen right there. Uh, on that website, notice there's a thing here called income potential and there's a medical billing income calculator. Now, if you haven't seen that already, look, we've already got some numbers plugged in on this, but you can change those numbers to anything that you think are practical. The number of doctors that you'd like to have as clients, uh, the number of patients each doctor sees each day, and the average number of days the office is open. Then put in a percentage of what you're going to charge for the claims and the average amount of a claim. Now, if you don't know what those are, you can just leave these numbers as is, and here's what you'll come up with. Uh, $273,000 a year, folks, servicing just six doctors. And Eric, isn't that about the average of our typical licensee, about six? About six. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, I mean, if most get if most licensees get over 10, then at that point they've got to think about hiring somebody else to help out and expanding and maybe even uh, at some point maybe even open a, 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 you know their own commercial office space. But folks, that's $22,000 a month, a month. So compare that with what we showed you that you could earn as a uh, working in a doctor's office. What was that, Eric? Thirty-four thousand, right? Right. And uh, that's two hundred seventy-three thousand dollars a year. Now, folks, of course, that's not net income. There are going to be some costs involved in that, but we have basically figured out that it's somewhere around uh, uh, maybe twenty-five to thirty percent. So even seventy percent of this number here, Eric, is more than the average uh, American makes, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, and 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 that would probably be in some labor costs because that's and I, I think we all kind of agree about this. Once you get to that four to five doctor level, then you you as a licensee you need to make that decision: Do I stay right where I am, or do I want to continue to keep growing my business? And at that point, I need to bring somebody in to actually do the labor intensive, actually doing the bills portion of it. So yeah, absolutely. This is yeah. this is. This is what you can certainly be able to do. All right, now, folks, in today's market, though, here's our here's our warning to all of you who are looking at trying to get into this business, and maybe you're figuring out how to do it on your own. In today's market, you will fail in medical billing if you are just a medical billing business. That is, all you're going out and talking to the doctors about is their medical billing. There's much more to this industry than just the insurance claims filing that's involved in medical billing. So what we do as a company is we train you to be a what we call a medical reimbursement consultant or specialist. That is somebody who's involved with every aspect of the dollars re, uh, the doctor's revenue inside their office. Now, this uh, chart here is kind of illustrating what the revenue cycle looks like. We'll go into more in detail in that in some other webinars. But for now, just trust us that we've got every one of those things figured out for our licensees and services that you can offer to the doctor to help the doctor uh, achieve a true total revenue cycle management. Uh, some of those services you'll see on our website or if you go to our virtual brochure and uh, these flyers here are just illustrating uh, what some of those services are just briefly there. So Eric, I guess it goes back to that question that you've already asked me of course, how does a medical billing business get clients? Uh, well, one thing we do know is how not to get a client, and that is if you walk out to a doctor's office and just ask, uh, uh, do you need any billing <laughs> help? Yeah. Do, you need, do you need any billing help? Uh, basically, the doctor will look like this, right? No. Yeah. Why? Because they think that their billing is under control right now, right? right. You haven't given them any reason. You haven't educated that doctor uh, to the point like we teach you to do so that that doctor wants to even be open to hearing uh, an alternative. Yeah, and, and it's kind of like uh, why if, if we already know what the answer is going to be, that's where, again, we have uh, worked very diligently of saying, how do we get you in front of those doctors? That's not the question to ask. 
a lot of people ask Patrick, and you've heard, or you've even heard this, uh, do I have to go do any cold calling? Well, to me, what this last screen is, is all about is cold calling, and that yeah. is not what we teach you to do. No, no, absolutely wrong. In fact, I, I know some companies and books that are out on the market, Eric, that teach you to go out and just knock doors or, or mail letters out telling people that you've opened up a medical billing office. That is not what will get you business. Now, folks, if you can approach a doctor, though, and ask this question, they might perk up, wouldn't you, if you were a business owner? Could, it, could you use an increase of up to 30% in your revenue cycle? Now, Eric, if somebody came to me right now in my business here at American Business Systems and asked me that question, I would not shut the door. <laughs> I'm right. a smart enough businessman to say, uh, yes, I would be interested. How would you do that? And that's all right. you want, right, is for a doctor to say, how could you do that? We can show them how they can do that. And they get very excited about it, too, just like this young lady is obviously very excited about that. <laughs> Well, actually, whenever we can, and again, and the, the question always going to come down, how do I get to that doctor to even ask them that question? And folks, as Patrick said, that's those are one of the things that we teach in that five days of live training, to how to get past the gatekeeper. Because if you ask the gatekeeper that as well, they'll still kind of shut you down. So again, we know how to get you in front of those doctors. Yes, absolutely. Eric? Why don't you tell them a little bit about uh, this slide and why we can show them how to get in the door to see a doctor using some of these other services that are out there. Absolutely. Uh, you can see here we have at least nine different services uh, here with American Business Systems. And yes, you get all of these nine services uh, when you come on board with us here at American Business Systems. We don't piecemeal this together. We don't sell you a smaller package so that you just get just high claim. Now you get everything here. The reason we do that is because you need all of these services to actually help you open the door with some of these areas. There's not a doctor out there in the market today that is not having trouble collecting money of some sort, especially now that it's getting to having to collect money from patients or even from insurance companies. Uh, what about auditing? Uh, the doctors can get audited right now uh, at any day, any time, and matter of fact, there's a there's a study out there that says any individual doctor could be under one or two, or up to three audits at a time. So we know how to use these different approaches to actually get past the gatekeeper in front of the doctor, and then sometimes at those points, sometimes you're actually asked to come right back to the back. And there's no better way than if you're out there talking with doctors or in the marketplace or you're doing something and all of a sudden you get invited to speak to a doctor. Yeah. So one of the things that you saw illustrated there, of course, was this EMRX. Now, folks, that, that's electronic medical records. You know that that is the big thing right now amongst the, the healthcare field. Every doctor is going to eventually have to have some sort of EMR system in their office. Uh, but folks, one of the things that you may not know is that the government is willing to give the doctors some stimulus money up to $24,000 starting this year just because they get involved with an electronic medical record system that is uh, what we call uh, certified for meaningful use. Meaningful use meaning it meets certain qualifications and uh, we have of course uh, our system EMRX has been certified for the stage two. There was a stage one last year, uh, year before, this year it's stage two and folks we're already one of only a handful of companies, right Eric, that, that have actually right. been certified. Absolutely. Matter of fact, you know, because there were so many EMR systems that had not met the stage two requirements, they've actually adjusted a few things so that some of these other companies could actually catch up. But folks, we're, we're not with one of those companies that have to catch up. The government's not having to wait on us to catch up so that we're like everybody else. We're well ahead of the game. Right. Well ahead of the game. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, another way that you can get in to talk to a doctor is about their patient receivables. Look at this quote here from the McKinsey and Company. Physicians typically collect only about 50% of their outstanding patient balances, resulting in almost $60 billion in bad debt. Now, folks, what if I told you that you could approach a doctor and tell that doctor that you could increase this revenue from patients' collections using one of the services we call Choice Pay? To, from 50% up to 98%. That's what this service does. And for a doctor, that means a tremendous amount of uh, increase in their revenue that they don't now have. 
So again, a great door opener to get in the door to talk to the doctor. Even if they think their billing is under control, they'll talk to you about this, right, Eric? Because they all have a problem with yeah, this. Yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to tee off on this, this, this one here just real quickly. Uh, there's been many questions that have been asked, Patrick, of you and I and everybody else here on the team. What happens whenever uh, these doctors stop taking certain insurances? And we certainly know that through the Affordable Care Act that some doctors are not taking all medical insurances. Right. Um, so then what? Well, the patients still have to find a way to pay those doctors. There are going to be a lot of Americans still today that are not going to be able to afford uh, medicine, health care uh, anyway. Right. Or if they do, their deductibles are so high, they've got to figure out some way to pay that off. Yeah. Well, choice pay, folks, is a great now now solution, not a someday solution. Uh, it's a good now solution directly for those doctors. So certainly whenever you're discussing these, these cash flow issues with the doctors, this is certainly one of them that is, I believe, it is becoming more and more popular amongst our licensees. By the way, we just did a webinar, uh, what was it, maybe two or three weeks ago, Eric, uh, that's still out there on our blog, of course, uh, at absystems.com slash blog. Uh, where we discussed specifically what happens if uh, you know we become what's called a single payer system in the United States, we we compared ourselves to Canada, which already has that, and there are billing companies up there making a lot of money billing for doctors still, right? Exactly. Yeah. So um, the industry that we're talking about here, when Patrick again showed this, some of the slides that a six percent growth increase, uh, you know, trillions of dollars in in, in uh, healthcare reimbursements that need to be recovered. Folks, even again, if we do go to a single payer, like Patrick said, we did do a webinar that uh, someone's still is going to have to do the billing for those doctors. Yeah, there's over a dozen different entities that they bill for there in Canada, so uh, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, got to move along here to the next way that you could get in to see a doctor, and that's through our service called Quick Collect. Now, folks, this helps doctors collect their lost profits. That means they bill the patient, the patient hasn't paid them, and they have just given up on them, basically. So what do they do? At the end of the year, they write it off right. uh, on their taxes, and uh, believe me, the doctor would rather have that money in their pocket. Well, we can help them collect that money and reduce their collection costs tremendously with Quick Collect. So, again, read some more on our website about all these services or ask your ABS rep to explain that one to you. Our virtual brochure goes into these as well. AutoCard is another way to help fill the doctor's office. Now, there are some doctors out there, brand new ones, for example, that don't have the number of patients that they'd like to have to fill up their schedule each week. So we can help them with that with what's called AutoCard, which is an automated way of staying in contact with the patients that are out there uh, to bring them back in for regular checkups and to get referrals from those patients to new patients. Uh, it's an online system that sends out literal physical greeting cards and postcards in the mail to the patients. A wonderful marketing system that you can use, by the way, to uh, help you build this business as well. Then we have iDocs Now. Uh, that is another service that you can actually use. And again, since we're all going paperless now, uh, there are thousands upon thousands of paper. Um, this will actually help. Now, this doesn't convert things from paper that goes directly into our EMRX system, but it does keep all those records that you see behind that bulletproof glass there uh, accessible for the doctor. Now, you got to understand that the doctor has to keep those records for at least seven years, some up to 10 years. And, uh, you know, Patrick, real estate is expensive. No matter if it's in shelves or in other places, that gets expensive. Here is a great solution, Patrick, showing that it's on the screen right now. Uh, the documents can be redacted so that it can be sent to an attorney or to some workers' comp portion of it. Every time that you go in there, it gets checked out. Great service here, and Patrick, they can a licensee can actually uh, market this to people who are not doctors. And sure. Talk, talk to them a little bit about that. Yeah, anybody who wants to go paperless, think about all the educational and financial institutions out there that are just buried in paperwork. This is a way to move all that paper to the cloud and have it searchable and accessible by anybody in their organization from any computer 24-7. Uh, 
So anyway, it's a great service, and uh, boy, I wish I could go into detail on this one because I get excited about this. We use it here in our office. We don't have any paper. Uh, Rody just told me just just today that she said we have the last file cabinet that we're converting and everything will be gone, and now we have no paper. So there you I'm go. excited about that. Yeah. Then there's Audit Guard. Now, folks, the uh, government sometimes steps into a doctor's office and says, we want to look at your records. We're going to uh, see whether you've been uh, billing the way you should. Uh, if they're overbilling, they can get charged thousands of dollars in fines. And uh, this is a service that you can offer to a doctor where we have certified medical coders who will do this service for you. Uh, you just basically tell the doctor about it and make money on it. But we do the service behind the scenes for you. And uh, we provide uh, complete reports to the doctor proving to the doctor that he is either overbilling or underbilling, and in either case, he needs to correct it, and this can help him uh, know how to correct that. So it's a great door opener as well for uh, people who walk into a doctor's office and talk to him about their, their coding and whether it's done correctly. That kind of ties in with the next service called CodeWrite because our certified medical coders can help the doctors improve their reimbursement rates by up to 30%. If they're under coding just to be safe so they don't get audited by Medicare, they could be losing money and leaving money on the table. That's rightfully theirs. And so here's one of the ways we can increase their revenue as well with this service. And, and, Again, and that, that lets you to. know – oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that lets you know as a, as, a, uh, as a medical billing company, a lot of people ask us, Patrick, do I have to go take a coding class? Do I have to become a coder? I, I wanted to kind of throw that in there because you, you could see – as soon as you become a licensee at American Business Systems, you're in the coding business. Right. You have certified coders working for you. Exactly. <laughs> Through us, yeah. So who are your potential clients that are out there? Well, it's pretty simple. We showed you this form earlier. Any medical provider who files insurance claims using this form as their guideline, whether they're doing it on paper or electronically, this is a standard form the government came up with. It's called the 1500 form. And if they're using this form, then you can you can bill for those. And there's lots of them, aren't there, Eric? There are a ton of them, and this is this this doesn't even scratch the surface of all the different uh, ones out there. I, I can I'll tell you one that's not on there right now is a sleep center. Uh, you, you don't even have that up there, but I can tell you how many yes. of our licensees have have gotten a sleep center, Patrick, and just they're doing so well with one sleep center. Well, that's because those sleep centers charge for their uh, their whole slew of tests, like up to nine hundred dollars. So I just interviewed uh, Tracy Clark. You remember her? She's a young lady that went through training last year. She went out, and within about three months, she got her first client, which was a sleep center, doing over two, almost three hundred thousand dollars a month in billing. Eric. So what's the, got, what's six percent of that? Uh, eight and a half percent. Eight and a half percent. Yeah, it comes wow. up to some ridiculous figure, like sixteen thousand dollars a month for this first client that she signed up. Well, and the, the doctor next, that's the head of that center is go, uh, also uh, practices in another center that has sixteen more doctors. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Anyway, well, that kind of goes uh, along with the question that Brian asked. You know, is this only for medical doctors? Uh, it is for medical doctors that are filing on the CMS fifteen hundred form, Brian. So just remember that. If right. they're filing on this form, you can do the billing for them. Now, dentists don't file on this form. We're talking about medical providers, um, everything like we said from a sleep study to a laboratory to a nephrologist to a family practitioner. Yeah. Those are the people that all, we're All the specialties, right. Yeah, exactly. And unlike okay. a franchise – oh, sorry, Eric. No, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to talk about their territory because we get that question sometimes. Well, are we limited or can you restrict my territory? Folks, you don't want to be restricted in this business because you can do billing for any doctor anywhere in the entire continental United States, well, and Alaska and uh, Hawaii. So you don't want to be restricted. In fact, that happens a lot, doesn't it, Eric? Somebody will start doing a billing for a doctor here. That doctor knows a doctor in another state. Through our technology, where you know you know there's no paper involved, you can do everything over the internet and get that doctor set up and start billing for another doctor. And there's there's a licensee in uh, states that have doctors in a dozen other states. It's right. Great. I, I mean, we know of uh, one in Ohio. She you said that she looks outside of her window to a cornfield. Right. But she, but she has doctors from coast to coast. Yeah, from coast to coast. 
Now let me just tell you about a few lifetime, uh, uh, real life examples. What time is it? Oh, we got six minutes. Okay, just briefly. You go ahead and ask any questions, though, or jump in here if you have some that you need to ask there. But okay, go right ahead. I'll I'll look them over. You can see most of these interviews, by the way, with these people on our blog. I'm showing you again our website there because under news, you see it right up here. News. There's a little thing called blog, and you'll see some of those recorded uh, interviews with these people. I did one just uh, last week with uh, uh, Don Desjardins. Now. Uh, the reason I want to tell you about some of those is because those are important that you know that they are real life people. Uh, but there's there's a bunch of them out there, so you've got to go watch those. Just scroll down. When you get to the bottom, by the way, there's a little link down there that says older articles. We'll click that because you'll go back in time and see that we've been doing this for you know the last uh, two or three years at least. Okay, Eric. Uh, any other questions? We want to tell them about the training class here, or uh, yeah. I think most of these questions that uh, that are, are here towards the end, I think we actually answered them as we sort of went along there. And I know that there will be another uh, question that will be answered here when you get into the last part of the slides here. But, folks, let's just, uh, let's just let you know that we've got three and a half more weeks. Uh, March will be here. We're, it's a five days of live training, eight to five, starting Monday morning. We go through that entire week. What you're going to learn is uh, how to get in front of those doctors. That's really now you're going to have some time where you're going to actually have hands-on time with the laptops, learning how to actually do billing. But uh, we know the importance of the business is that you get a client, and so that's what we want to focus our attention on and answer your questions. We've literally had people come in here with no background in marketing but they know that this is the type of business they need to be in and they walk out of there on Friday afternoon going I am so confident of what I've learned here that I know that I can go out there and go get those doctors and Patrick every week we're hearing about new ice disease uh, picking up clients here and there so absolutely. Uh, Eric I can't, I can't even tell you how many I've got sitting in my inbox that I need to get back to to set up the interviews with those people because the signups are continuing to come in and I kinda get backlogged on that but go out to our blog folks uh, read those, listen to those, you'll be amazed at some of the stories you hear. Isn't that the best way to hear? Not from us, we can tell you anything, right? Uh, but the people who've been through the training, who've gone through the due diligence, checking us out as a company, they've been through that week-long training, they've gone back, they've experienced our lifetime support, those are the people you should be talking to. And ask your ABS rep and we'll be glad to hook you up with some of those people so you can talk to real live human beings. Some of them even have commercial offices, uh, and if you ask them nicely, that some of them will let you come visit them uh, in their office there. So, you know, Patrick. Matter of fact, uh, in this picture that you're showing right now, just to your right, that couple, the couple that's in the green shirt and the lady that's in the black shirt there, yeah. uh, Adam just did a an interview with him. Right. And they they just came to class not too long ago because. The room that we're in right now just got remodeled, <laughs> so this is a this is a very recent shot. Yeah, there's a couple in that room that already has clients that they're already going for. Them. Right, that that ugly mustard yellow wall that's in there uh, was just redone. That's right. So this is a very recent picture. Okay, uh, Eric, I want to tell them about our guarantee before we get yeah. too far uh, close to the end. Folks, let me just put it this way. I'll, I'll put it back on the screen here, but for now, let me just talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, person to person. I can tell you, folks, that we struggled with this as to how to really share with people what we have is real. And uh, at one point, I was offering a guarantee. If you came to the training, sat through the first day and a half and didn't like it, you could get your money back and go home. At one point, I said, you know what? They don't really know what we have until they've seen all of it. So you can come for the whole week, Sit through the entire class for the whole week, uh, ask all the questions you want, get all the proprietary information and secrets that we have to share, all the handouts are handed to you. You can talk to all the other people there in the class and brainstorm with them. And if for any reason, at the end of that week, if for any reason you don't think this business is right for you, then just tell my staff and they'll arrange for you to receive a 100% refund of your license fee. Folks, we don't want your money unless this is right for you. Because if it is right for you, you're going to go out and build a business. We're going to make money on the back end, on some of the transactions, and uh, that's how we stay in business. So we don't we don't want your licensing fee. What we want you to be is very successful in this business. So anyway, I thought I'd just share that with people. And folks, and that, that's that's certainly why we we work with you as we do work with you. 
and we do the demos as Patrick had mentioned earlier uh, because we truly do want to see you succeed and that's why we spend so much time even during training I know I know Patrick we go eight to five but I know that some, sometimes we go even later than five because we really do want to work with you so folks if you're interested 